Croy Bierman has been forbidden from the closet amid his ongoing divorce from Kim Zolciak. Welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. It has been over a year since they filed for divorce for the first time. Though they tried to reconcile, it did not last but are still living under the same roof. Now, rules have been set forth so they can continue to live somewhat amicably. Keep reading to see what the closet rules entail. This has been a very tumultuous divorce between Croy Bierman and Kim Zolciak. They filed for divorce and were both throwing accusations at one another. Then, they decided to try to reconcile, but that did not last long, which was not a big surprise. Kim had wanted Croy to be drug tested, whereas he asked that his wife get a psych evaluation. More so, he alleged that she had a long standing gambling problem, which had led to their extreme financial struggles. The police have been called to their home, and Croy has been beyond stressed, knowing that he cannot afford their lavish Georgia mansion. It has been set for foreclosure and auction a handful of times, but dodged the bullet. Right now, Croy and Kim are trying to halt it one last time, but they have other issues to contend with. Since they still live under the same roof, it has been determined that they have to follow a master closet schedule. According to TMZ, Kim can only go into the closet between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. While Kim is in the closet during those hours, Croy Bierman cannot enter under any circumstances. However, he can come and go as he pleases outside of those set days and times. It is a very nice closet judging by the TikTok from September 2023. Now, roughly seven months ago, Kim was ordered to stay on another side of their Georgia home. She did not get the primary bedroom as that was handed to Croy. The Closet of Sales Kim Zolchik was making cash for some time by selling off her and her family's personal belongings on the Bierman's closet. Unfortunately, Croy Bierman made it clear that he never saw a penny of it and did not want her selling any more of their marital property. Though she could take the time she gets in their closet to organize and update their site, that is not allowed. She can have as much fun with her merchandise as she wants. Yet any selling of it as it could have been purchased with marital funds is prohibited. What do you think about designated closet time? Is this the craziest thing that you have ever heard, or is this on brand for Kim and Croy? Let us know in the comments below. The sun cast long, dappled shadows across the lush green lawn of the sprawling suburban estate, a place that once bustled with the energy and laughter of a happy family. Today, the air was heavy with tension as Croy Bierman stood outside the grand, Tudor-style mansion, his heart pounding in his chest. The house, his home for many years, now felt like an impenetrable fortress. His thoughts raced back to the recent events that had turned his world upside down. The divorce with Kim Zolciak, his wife of over a decade, was not just a legal separation, it was a severing of dreams, a rupture of shared hopes. Croy had always been a private person, preferring the quiet stability of family life over the glitz and glamour that came with being a professional athlete and reality TV star. He had met Kim in 2010, a meeting that seemed serendipitous, almost as if their stars had aligned for that precise moment. Kim, with her vivacious personality and larger-than-life presence, had been his perfect counterbalance. Together, they had built a life raised children, and navigated the complexities of fame and family. But now, as he stood on the doorstep of their shared memories, the reality of their estrangement hit him like a cold wind. The front door opened slowly, revealing a somber-looking housekeeper. She nodded politely but with a tinge of awkwardness, as if she could feel the invisible lines that had been drawn in the sand. Croy, Ms. Olchek has given specific instructions, she said gently but firmly, You are not to enter the master bedroom or the closet. Croy sighed deeply, the weight of the words pressing down on him. He nodded, acknowledging her statement, but inside, he felt a surge of frustration. The closet, 
It was not just any closet, it was a testament to their life together. Kim's extravagant collection of designer clothes, shoes, and accessories had always amused him. Her fashion was her passion, a symbol of her identity, and in some ways, it had become a symbol of their union. The housekeeper led him to the guest bedroom where some of his belongings had been neatly packed. The room felt sterile, devoid of the warmth that once permeated their home. He looked around, memories flooding back, Christmas mornings with the kids, late-night conversations with Kim. He picked up a framed photograph from the bedside table. It was of him and Kim, taken during happier times. They were at a beach, smiling at the camera, the sun setting behind them. He remembered that day vividly. It was their fifth anniversary, a day filled with laughter, love, and promises of forever. He felt a lump form in his throat as he gently placed the photograph back. Divorce was never something he had envisioned. They had their disagreements, like any couple, but they always managed to find common ground. However, the past year had been tumultuous. The pressures of public scrutiny, financial stress, and personal differences had slowly eroded the foundation of their relationship. They had tried counseling, attempted to rekindle the spark, but somewhere along the way, they had lost each other. Croy walked over to the window, looking out at the garden where their children often played. He could hear their laughter, feel their joy, but it was all a distant echo now. The reality was stark, his family was fracturing, and he felt powerless to stop it. He turned his attention back to the task at hand. He needed to collect his things and leave. The court had mandated that they live separately until the divorce was finalized. Kim had insisted on staying in the house, and he had agreed, not wanting to disrupt the children's lives any more than necessary. As he packed his belongings, he found himself hesitating at the thought of leaving the closet behind. It wasn't just about the clothes and shoes, it was about the memories attached to them. He remembered the countless hours Kim spent organizing, the joy in her eyes when she found the perfect outfit, the way she would model for him, seeking his approval. It was their little ritual, a moment of connection amidst the chaos of their busy lives. He took a deep breath and made his way to the master bedroom. The housekeeper's words echoed in his mind, but he needed closure. The door was slightly ajar, and he could see the edge of the luxurious, custom-built closet. He paused, grappling with the conflict within him. It felt like trespassing, yet it also felt like reclaiming a part of his life that was slipping away. Summoning his resolve, Croy pushed the door open and stepped inside. The closet was as he remembered, meticulously organized, with rows of designer dresses, shelves of shoes, and racks of handbags. It was a fashionista's paradise, a testament to Kim's impeccable taste and style. He ran his fingers over the soft fabrics, each piece telling a story of a different chapter in their lives. He spotted the dress Kim wore on their first date, a shimmering black gown that had caught his eye the moment she walked into the restaurant. He smiled at the memory, their nervous laughter, the awkward yet endearing conversation that had followed. Further down, he saw the suit he wore on their wedding day, a symbol of the vows they had taken, promises of love, loyalty, and companionship. His eyes landed on a pair of red heels, Kim's favorite. She wore them on special occasions, and each time she did, it was like a spark of magic. He picked them up, feeling the smooth leather, and closed his eyes. The memories were vivid, but they were now tinged with a bittersweet edge. Suddenly, he heard footsteps behind him. He turned to see Kim standing in the doorway, her expression a mixture of surprise and anger. Croy, I told you to stay out of here, she said, her voice cold and distant. I'm sorry, Kim, he replied, his voice soft. I just needed to say goodbye. She looked at him, her eyes softening for a moment before she turned away. This is not just about you, Croy. It's about boundaries. We need to respect each other's space if we're going to get through this. He nodded, understanding her point. I know, I just, this place holds so many memories. It's hard to let go. Kim sighed, her shoulders slumping slightly. It's hard for me too. But we have to move forward, 
for the sake of the kids, for our own sake. They stood in silence for a moment, the weight of their shared past hanging heavy in the air. Finally, Kim spoke again. You should go. We'll figure this out, one step at a time. Croy nodded, placing the red heels back on the shelf. He took one last look around the closet, a silent farewell to the memories it held. As he walked out of the room, he felt a sense of finality, a chapter closing in his life. Outside, the sun was beginning to set, casting a warm glow over the estate. Croy took a deep breath, feeling the crisp evening air fill his lungs. He walked to his car, a sense of resolve settling over him. This was not the end, but a new beginning. He had his children to think about, a future to build, and a life to live. As he drove away, the house slowly disappearing in the rearview mirror, Croy felt a mixture of sadness and hope. The road ahead was uncertain, but he knew he had the strength to navigate it. The past would always be a part of him.